barefoots on Bondi, Megan cradles her baby bump on Cindy Beach and wears 880 pounds maxi dress before she and Harry kick off their shoes to join an anti-bad vibe circle with surfing mental health group. Harry and Meghan visited some of Sydney's most iconic sites today as they kicked off their shoes and took part in an anti-bad vibe circle on Bondi Beach before the Prince scaled Harbour Bridge. The city, which has been gripped by Megmania, was filled with thousands of royal fans as the Duke of Sussex and his pregnant wife travelled back east from Melbourne to kick off the fourth day of their tour down under. Harry and Meghan, who cradled her baby bump in an 880 pounds, AUD dollar 1 comma 615 USD 1148 dollars maxi dress arrived at Sydney's famous Bondi Beach first thing in the morning joining the one wave group to discuss mental health on the iconic stretch of sand during the session Megan spoke candidly about her pregnancy telling another expectant mother that it felt rather like jet lag while Harry was praised for his openness about his mental health battles Harry kicked off his shoes as soon as he hit the Bondi sand, before his beaming wife, wearing a dress by Australian designer Martin Grant, followed suit and unstrapped her heeled wedges. The royal couple then spoke to children at a nearby school about equality, where a proud and passionate Meghan told students how her upbringing and first job taking out the trash had made her the person she is today. The Duchess was then given the afternoon off as Harry scrambled up Harbour Bridge with competitors from the Invictus Games, an international sporting event for wounded or sick armed forces veterans created by the Prince. In their final engagements on Friday, the Royals met with Australia's opposition leader Bill Shorten and his wife Chloe Shorten, at Admiralty House, then the Prime Minister and his wife Scott and Jenny Morrison, at Kirobi House. Mr. Shorten said it was a privilege to meet the Duke and Duchess, despite being a staunch Republican. During a trip to Bondi Beach at the start of the day, the Duchess of Sussex revealed that she had woken up at 4.30 am to do yoga and told the group it was so good for healing your mind. Jessina Oakes, 26, of Bondi, said she spoke mainly to the Duchess. She mentioned that she practices yoga. She said, she said it helps ground her and she tries to find the time to make it part of her daily routine. Oakes also spoke to Meghan about the dangers of social media, particularly its effect on young people's self-image. She said a really beautiful quote. She said flattery and criticism run through the same filter. She said it was very freeing that she no longer has social media. Meghan and Harry visited the famous speech for Fluoro Friday a session aimed at encouraging discussion around mental health which included an anti-bad vibe circle and yoga practice. The couple arrived to cheers at 8.30am and were both presented with lays, a pink garland for Meghan and a blue one for Harry. Charlotte Connell, 35, was at the beach with her son Finn and said the Duchess had been suffering from the double whammy of jet lag and pregnancy. Mrs. Connell, who is 23 weeks pregnant, said, Meghan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up at 4.30 am this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said, as she has both the baby and jet lag to contend with. Hundreds of royal fans took to the beach, hoping to catch a royal wave on the latest stop for Harry and Meghan on their 16-day tour to Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga. Ahead of his Harbour Bridge climb, the Duke swapped his blazer and trousers for a short-sleeved black shirt before making quick pace, swapping his position between up to a dozen others to chat to different climbing companions. However, he decided to forego the goofy bright blue and grey jumpsuit thousands of tourists have been photographed wearing as they smile at the arches summit. As luck would have it, the morning clouds and fog cleared up by the time he began his ascent about 3 p.m., treating him to an unblemished view as a flag advertising the Invictus Games flew next to the Australian flag. When they made it to the top, Harry, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, and four others posed side by side for a memorable photo with the harbour and opera house in the background. Mr. Morrison appeared out of breath when the group reached the summit. But former military man Harry looked relaxed and unfazed by the arduous climb. Others making the climb with the prince included Invictus Games ambassador Gwen Churn whose husband, veteran Peter Cafe, took his own life last February, and Luke Hill, Ruth Hunt, and Peter Rudland. 
The Sydney Harbour Bridge is an Australian icon and I can think of no better place to raise the Invictus Game Sydney 2018 flag, Mr Morrison said earlier in the day. It will be especially wonderful for the Duke and me to share this moment with members of the Australian team before they get ready to compete for Australia. The pilgrimage, almost mandatory for any Sydney visitor, follows a comprehensive safety briefing with climbers hooked up to wires running up the steel structure throughout the climb. Getting to the top requires climbing 1,332 stairs up on arch, across the span, and down the other side through sometimes ferocious winds. All those steps burns about 500 calories, which will help maintain his trim figure ahead of a sumptuous dinner with Mr. Morrison and opposition leader Bill Shorten at Admiralty House this evening. Harry's cracking pace meant he completed the up to 3.5-hour climb in less than an hour. Following the Bondi visit, the mother-to-be and her husband arrived at MacArthur Girls' School in Parramatta, shortly after students had finished a final year exam. Meghan changed from her Martin Grand Beach dress into a sleeveless navy frock with a pale blue band on the bottom of the skirt by Roxanda. The design, which retails for £1,295, AUD $2,376, USD $1,690, is Meghan's first nod to the British fashion industry while on tour. Harry slipped on a dark navy blazer and checkered shirt, wearing the same beige he knows he'd on while chatting to locals on the sand at the world-famous beach. The location of the school visit was supposed to have been kept secret from students, but secrets are hard to keep in the era of social media. Most of you would probably have got up this morning got ready for school and turned up thinking it was going to be a normal day at school. Is that right? New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian asked an assembly before the royals' arrival, 